Just saw the Texans have announced Lonnie Johnson traded to the Chiefs. What? Terms of the deal not yet announced, but the Texans themselves announced it in a PR email it sent out moments ago. What pick did they have to attach to Lonnie Johnson to <laughs> trade him? Did they get a seventh round pick from uh, Lonnie uh, for Lonnie Johnson? That's uh, pretty good value if they did. I'll tell you what, guys, the Texans have had a pretty good last couple of days. This is the best move they've made in a long, long time. They got anything from Lonnie Johnson. It's a pretty good job. <laughs> Man, I just... Celebration throughout Houston. What did we say last week? Don't let the door hit you or the good Lord split you. Mm. This guy played with the confidence of Deion Sanders. The results on the field would be if current Deion Sanders went out there no, and tried to play. Don't do that to he Deion. Missing, he's missing two toes now. Don't do that to Deion. Eight toed Deion Sanders may be better than Lonnie Johnson. Okay. Zero toes Deion Sanders, I would think, <laughs> over Lonnie Johnson. Lonnie's got the attitude of Deion. He's got the ability of me. Not a great combination. Uh, another Bill O'Brien pick that didn't work out. It was funny. Lonnie Johnson was celebrating the Texans pick of Derek Stingley on Thursday. I'm like, Lonnie, don't you realize this probably means you're out of a job, dude? They just took a corner in the top three, and <laughs> you're the corner that they're likely trying to replace. And uh, apparently he met with the Texans, and he requested a trade or release. So, oh, man, it's it's going to suck if he becomes anything in Kansas City. But, look, it, it was time to move on. This relationship just it has not worked. Someone <laughs> tweeted me, how bad is Kansas City secondary? Oh, man. I mean, if they want Lonnie Johnson, it can't be too good. They didn't even list him as a cornerback or a safety. They just listed him as a DB because he doesn't actually have a position because he never solidified himself in yeah. multiple opportunities to play either cornerback or safety. They were going to move him to tight end if he stayed here for another year, I think. I think he's a corner. I think he's better there, but... The low bar to clear. Wow. Texans have acquired Patrick Mahomes in the trade with the Chiefs mm. for Lonnie Johnson. That's a bad, bad trade, and you already got a quarterback. This is a great hell of a deal by Nick. <laughs> yeah. Hell of a deal. We got Davis Mills. What are we doing here? <laughs> let's, uh, let's actually laugh about something that is a positive Texans-related note. Conditional seventh is the compensation. Is that really it? I, I'm assuming the condition is that Lonnie actually makes the team. Damn. Conditional seventh. It's I mean... It's about right. I was so. fine with the guy being shown the door. So you get a conditional seventh. There's was, a chance it turns into something. Also, it's a 2024 conditional seventh. They really gave this guy away for nothing. <laughs> the pick is not even next year. It's the year after. They really gave Lonnie Johnson away for nothing. Oh. You're laughing, but when those conditional seventh round picks from the Mark Ingram and Lonnie Johnson trade turn into gold jacket guys, we'll remember. We'll remember. Nick Casario fleeced the Kansas City Chiefs, fellas. <laughs> They got way too much back. Bro, that is the same. Like, I could trade Cody Stutes and probably get a seventh-round conditional pick. More value with Cody. That's unbelievable. Not surprising, but very funny. Speaking Adi of funny. Adios, man. See yeah. you later. Speaking of funny, Damian Pierce, who we were just discussing, the Texans selected him in the draft over the weekend. This guy's a character, man. This guy is going to provide some juice on these interviews all season long. I am I'm actually based on hearing Derek Stingley and Kenyon Green and Jalen Petrie and Christian Harris and Mechie. Just hearing some of those guys, I was like, okay, like I kind of have a feel for exactly what the Texans are looking for from a guy when he talks about his game and what he wants to do when he gets in the building and things like that. And then I started Started listening to Pierce, and I yeah. was like, "Okay, this guy, different, different guy, different guy." And then they showed the behind the scenes on Houston Texans social media. <laughs> Nick Casario calling him is like, "We really love your energy." Well, in this short little montage, you'll understand the energy that uh, the Texans seem to enjoy from Pierce. Hold on, man, my phone going off, man. Hold on, man, my phone going off. But, hey, <laughs> I'm I'm happy to be in Texas. I'm glad I ain't nowhere cold. <laughs> and, hey, baby, let's, hey, let's go get this thing rocking, baby. Hey, well, I know Texas got pretty houses and pretty girls, so that's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> what a laugh. Yeah. I, I love his laugh. It's an infectious laugh. Pretty houses and pretty girls. He's not wrong. <laughs> He's not wrong. That's awesome. Yeah, a guy who grew up in Georgia, obviously played his college ball in Florida, so he loves the warm weather. So it's a great fit for him, and I think it's a great pick for the Texans, too, who clearly needed some running back help. I uh, I really enjoy I mean, he was just high-energy, unique personality, yeah. totally different than some of the very down-to-earth and soft-spoken running backs that have taken to the podium in the past few seasons for the Houston Texans. Uh, really liked the energy, and he is going to be – 
a one to watch in training camp. Not necessarily for the running back drills, but mm. just to see if that translates to some hilarity from a body language standpoint and just how, you know, how fun he is on the field. I'll tell you what, when training camp rolls around, I'm not going to be talking to Davis Mills. I'm going to be talking to Damian Pierce. Yeah, everybody's going to watch. Everyone's going to be talking to Lovey and Davis Mills right, and day maybe one. Derek Stingley. I'm going to be talking to the fourth round running back. Day one training camp wish list. Lovey, Davis Mills, Damian Pierce. <laughs> Flip those around. Damian Pierce, there it is. Lovey, Davis Mills. I actually want Pierce before Lovey because if he says something silly, I want to be able to ask Lovey about it. Mm. There you go. I like that. Give me Damian Pierce, first off the field, first training camp interview, first day of training camp. This was Nick Casario actually talking football about Damian Pierce. So I'd say in Damian's situation, you know, I think he'll have an opportunity. I mean, I don't think this is going to be about all about offense and who's going to carry the ball. and He's going to be a lead runner. I think that that's a bunch of BS. I think he's got to earn his opportunity on the team and, you know, hopefully create a role for himself. And I think his ability to potentially play on four downs is probably what's more important than any particular thing about, you know, how many yards he's going to run for in early downs. I mean, you know, we have a lot of good backs in this building and, you know, I'd say he's a part of that group, but I wouldn't say he's any better than the guys that we have in the building. So we'll let the competition kind of play itself out and we'll see what happens. Nick was in a pissy mood when being asked about the running back he selected. So let's 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 stop it, Nick. Your running backs right now is Rex Burkhead and Marlon Mack, who's barely played the last couple of years because of injuries. Rex Burkhead is washed, and Damian Pierce is the guy that a lot of people think could be a contributor right away. Very pissy Nick Casario there, calling it BS that Damian Pierce is going to have a role on this team pretty much. Well, if, if Nick Casario is telling the truth, the competition takes care of itself, Damian Pierce will have a big old role, and it won't be on special teams. Mm. His ability to play four downs, come on. Yeah, you, maybe you're going for it on fourth and inches and handing it to him. That's the fourth down role I want to see him on, not personal protector or something like that. Hey. That, was, that was one of those things Bill O'Brien used to tout about Alfred Blue. Oh, he's really good on special teams. What does he do? He's the personal protector on punt team. Oh, so you can't teach anybody else to do that? Damian Pierce played a ton of special team snaps in Florida. He did. He's on the kickoff team. I hope that he's the starting running back and he plays zero special team snaps for the Houston Texans. Yeah, that's ideal. <laughs> and like you said, Jake, it's not like he has to beat out a couple of really talented running backs. Uh, Damian Pierce should be good enough to get plenty of run for this team. From Damian. Thank you for watching my video. If you like the content, then please subscribe to my channel and like this video and make sure you tune into the wheelhouse on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5 weekdays from 3 to 7 every afternoon.